beautiful internet friends, a quick word. I wanna let you know to please stick around until the end of this video if you are interested in winning an iWalk. We have an exciting giveaway. Stick around to the end of the video to find out how you could win. Hello, my beautiful friends, and welcome back. This is little Bridget. You're gonna see her running around. If you haven't met my rats before, I have three of them. Welcome to the very first Patreon q and I'm gonna host these now once a month. All my patrons get to ask questions, and I will answer them all in this Q&A video, and then I asked you guys in the community tab to what questions you have, and I will tackle as many of those as we can. I am just gonna go ahead and dive in because we have a lot of ground to cover and a lot of really interesting questions. A little bit of vanity here. I feel like I shouldn't care about numbers, but we're almost at 100,000 subscribers. We're at like 80 something, and it would mean the world to me if you like this video, if you would hit like and also subscribe to help me reach that arbitrary number goal that I'm actually really excited about getting to, hopefully, sometime. Our first question comes from David. David asks me, what motivates me? To start this channel and to keep it going? I think that's a really good question. So I have a second channel called Trauma Talk that I started years ago and I learned that putting things into words for other people, like if I have to make my feelings make sense to a camera, they start making more sense to me. And what I knew that I was starting to actually consider amputation, that I was really thinking about it as a real option, I knew that this was going to be one of the most difficult things I'd ever gone through. and to start to put things into words in a way that actually makes sense, again, for other people was really healing for me. And so that's what motivated me to start it. And I thought that like maybe it would connect with like two people who were going through the same situation ever. So I just, you know, put the videos up. And then, then all of you guys showed up and have been an incredible part of this journey. A lot of different things motivate me to keep going. The rats are making noise in the background. I'm just gonna apologize, but keep talking. Honestly, I think one of the biggest things that, that motivates me to keep going if I'm ever like discouraged or anything like that is comments and stories that you guys share with me and that I get to read. I feel so honored that you guys care and that you trust me to tell me real things about your life and all the support that you've given me. Rona asks if I would ever consider getting an amusing tattoo on my residual limb. Absolutely. Though to be honest, it probably won't be an amusing one. It'll probably be something deep and serious because that's just how I end up always getting my tattoos. Marina asks about anxiety. How do you show your appreciation even when when you're struggling and how do you communicate or let him know that you need space versus when you need his active support? That is an amazing and a really important question. Communication is the only reason that we're here. We have worked through a lot and learning to really communicate what I needed and when I needed it was important and vice versa for him. Oftentimes, because I struggled with depression a lot and anxiety a lot, he would feel like he was causing it because he was around me a lot and he felt like he was doing something wrong. And so we had lots of conversations about why it wasn't his fault, why he wasn't causing it, why it's something that happens to me. And directing him to other resources I think was really helpful, like referring him to books. Um, I'll link a couple in the description that I think might be helpful. If you struggle with any kind of mental illness, you know that energy is a very limited resource. And so there are some times where I feel like I can't be a good enough spouse to him, but I do whatever I can. So I'm always like verbally expressing gratitude. And also like if we're sitting on the couch in the evening watching a movie or something like that. I'll rub his back because that's something that he really likes. It helps him relax that I, I can do. Joe asks what I think of the term disabled. Do I think of myself as a disabled person or a person like everybody else who just happens not to have two feet? Whew, good question. Uh, I guess technically I am disabled. I mean, yes. Uh, I don't have a problem with the word at all, but I think I joke about it more than anything. I don't actually like identify with that word. So I guess I feel like a normal person who is just missing a leg more than anything. I think I felt a lot more disabled when it came to dealing with like PTSD and depression and anxiety because those, those have been more difficult for me to deal with than losing a leg over the past many years. Those have been extremely disabling even though losing a leg is disabling as well. Alyssa asks, about disordered eating? Good question. Um, she's asking that if I struggle with disordered eating, and, and I did for years, I was anorexic for a chunk of time and then I was bulimic for much longer. She wonders if the weight loss because of losing a part of my body, because guess what? You lose weight if your leg's chopped off, has been like triggering for my eating disorder or anything like that. Not significantly, but like those thoughts will still come up. I don't know if it'll ever totally go away. Like, I don't know if those impulses to like eat less or control it or keep losing weight or like whatever when I don't need to at all will ever totally go away. I've gotten really good at just shutting them down. Just being like, nope, we're good, done. Not gonna think about it. But yeah, seeing a lower number on a scale 
because I lost a part of my body does kind of touch on that part of my mind that used to be so obsessed with how much I weighed. And for moments, I get that feeling of like, oh good, and I have to check myself and be like, no, that's that's not good. Like you're just aiming for a healthy weight at the end. So yeah, it's been a little bit triggering, but nothing that I haven't been able to handle. Kaden asks if there's anyone I particularly enjoy in the psychological community. Uh, Brene Brown, I am a huge fan of. I really like Elizabeth Gilbert too, even though technically I don't think she's in the psychological community. Maybe she is, I don't know if you'd classify her that way. I really like the channel Depression to Expression. Scott over there is fabulous. I listen to a lot of his content. The Body Keeps the Score is an incredible book that I really love. I think it's the best book I've ever read on trauma and psychology when it comes to that. I'll link it in the description below as well. Oh, uh, mm, one second. Yeah, we can't do this. We we can't do that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I know. Oh God, what have you done? What have you done? Well, that was my fault. You gonna call someone? Hmm? Well, that was a fun little adventure, wasn't it? Riley asks, ow! I'm having rat problems. She just ate my sock, which ate my foot. Why don't you just hang out on my shoulder and not cause any problems? Riley asks, if you could help people to really get one thing about what your life post-amputation is like, what would it be? The answer that immediately comes to mind is how exhausting everything is. It's hard to explain because I don't think it makes a whole lot of logical sense. Scientifically speaking, the energy output for amputees is significantly higher than for people who have all their limbs, especially any kind of leg amputee. It just takes so much energy to do things. Like it takes so much more energy to exist, to get a cup of water, to do anything. And I'm finally getting to a place where it feels more normal, where things kind of feel manageable and more normal. I'm, I'm kind of used to using my eye walk. I'm sure there'll be a better adjustment when I actually can use a prosthetic leg. It's so tiring. Everything is so tiring and doing things is really difficult. Everything is different. Like everything is a reminder that things aren't the same and that's okay. And I am really tired a lot because just existing suddenly takes so much more time and energy and it's hard to get stuff done. And I'm slowly kind of getting stronger and gaining more strength, but it, it definitely, every day is still a struggle energy wise. That is it for patron questions. Let's dive into some community tab one. By the way, if you don't know about the community tab, you should definitely check it out. If you click on my profile, Footless Joe, it's right there at the top. I'll ask questions to you guys. That's a good place for a lot of Q and A or feedback, just different things like that that I would love your voice on. Okay, this question was asked by Todd. Sincerely, I think this is one of the best questions that's ever been asked asked and it made me like laugh when I read it because I was like, oh my, oh my God. What Todd asked was, why do you feel self-conscious about going out in public when you do a good job putting yourself out there for literally hundreds of thousands of people in your video? First of all, thanks for saying I do a good job. I appreciate that. Wow, that is a great question. Sometimes I get insanely uncomfortable going out in public, like going to the post office or going to the grocery store, which I've done a grand total of twice by myself since losing my leg. Why is that difficult? Why, why am I scared of people's like stares in real life when the comments I get online are insane? Like people are not nice on the, the big videos, like the videos that have millions of views. Not like you guys, like my community here. And that's like, okay, it doesn't, get to me but people being weird about me or like staring too long in public feels like it's gonna wreck me tell me how that makes any sense I imagine a part of it probably has to do with control this for me like I was saying before is a creative outlet I get to do what I want with it. I get to control it. If someone's saying something like nasty or whatever, I get to decide how I want to respond to it. I can take a day, I can take a week, I can just delete it. Like I, you know, I can do whatever I want with it. But in public, it's all real time. It's all right away. It's all in your face. I still fear that judgment. Is there a rat doing something? Why? Why do you want to eat my eye walk? This is little D for anyone who doesn't know. I can also control exactly what I show you on camera. Like you don't see me standing up all the time. Like you don't see my amputated leg all the time. But if I'm walking around in public, people do, that's unavoidable. So I don't actually know entirely, but Todd, thank you for that fantastic question. It really is still making me think. Isa asks, can you please name as many communities as you identify as being part of, but in 30 seconds. The amputee community, the ex-conservative Christian community, uh, sexual assault and domestic violence survivor community. Think faster, Joe, think faster. Pet owner community, if that's an identity, uh, public speaker, crap, uh, wife, 
is an identity I have. Daughter is an identity I have. I'm failing at this. Michaela says, hey, I hope you see this. I wanted this for a while. What is it like to have a YouTube channel and to share your experiences and your journey because it's interesting and inspiring. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Again, I appreciate that. It's, it's awesome. I'd say 80% of the time, it's a very good thing in my life. 20% of the time, it can be semi-destructive. I can use it as a way of not dealing with real life, isolating from real people, because you need real people in your life. Um, you know, like that face-to-face -face connection really means something, but the vast majority of the time, hi, it is really good. It's helped me, like I said, go out and do stuff. It's helped me stay engaged. It's helped me have a positive mindset and, and the encouragement that I receive from you guys really helps me. My rat is eating my braid. Please don't do that. She's so sweet. Oh, this isn't a good ad for, for owning rats. I promise you they are trouble, but they're seriously the sweetest little things. So it's great, but also that didn't come overnight. Um, it took me six years of counseling before I could start Trauma Talk and talk about the things that I had gone through. Like six years of hard work, of, of hard, a lot to get there. And sometimes it's extremely painful and nerve wracking to put myself out there, especially on stuff that I'm afraid people will judge me on, but it helps me grow. And generally my fears are way worse than reality. I'm afraid people will judge me on stuff that they don't. And if they do, I realize it's not as scary as I thought it would be. Bruno asks, did your family know about this YouTube channel? And if so, what did they think about it? Good question also. So uh, if you watched my video about unwanted sexual attention as an amputee, that's the only thing that they're uncomfortable with. Brian really, really hates that. I hate it too. I, I don't like the gross comments that I get. She's stealing my camera cap. What are you, what are you trying to do there? Where are you gonna go? She's gonna take it back to her cage. Just gonna let her think that she's won until I'm done filming. Uh, one thing that is super odd, like I said, sometimes I'm more comfortable talking about stuff here because it's a way for me to process things, it's a way for me to cope and it's controlled than I am talking to people in real life. And so sometimes it freaks me out that people I actually know in real life watch this because I may release a video about how hard things are and how much I'm struggling or that I'm really like deep in depression and then I see them in real life and I'm like, don't really wanna have that conversation right now and it makes me uncomfortable that you know that, but here we are. But no, overall it's been amazing. Last two questions, Paige asks, how how hard was it to adjust to driving? It was not hard at all because I used to drive with my left foot anyways. I have an automatic car so I don't have to like shift myself. I don't need two feet to drive and because it, my ankle always hurt, I used my left foot to drive anyways. It's actually how I learned to drive when I was 16. I was having surgeries on my ankle then and so I would always just like tuck my right leg under my left one and drive with my left foot and that is still what I do. So honestly, not any change. Probably easier now that I don't have to like get my right leg out of the way. A couple people asked this question. Do you think a bionic foot would help your situation, maybe alleviate some of the nerve issues you've been experiencing. That question is from Julie, but a, a couple people asked that. I'm not sure what you mean by a bionic foot. It sounds cool. If it's what I think you mean, having like a, a motorized, a computerized ankle essentially where it's like adjusting to me as I walk, sounds like a great idea. But as I understand it, the technology is not quite there yet and it's also significantly more expensive. And I don't know that it would improve my quality of life enough to be worth it just because I don't know. When I actually can use a prosthetic and when I'm walking on it well, I'll be able to walk on it really well. I mean, the amputees that I know after they've adjusted to prosthetic legs, they walk, I mean, like you can barely tell. Like they walk really normally and that's what I can't wait to get to hopefully soon. Thank you to all of my patrons for being patrons. Thank you for asking awesome questions to everybody. I really appreciate you. If you like this video, if you like any of my content, I would love it if you would hit subscribe because we're getting we're getting close to 100,000. And uh, like I said before, that arbitrary number just, just sounds cool to me. And I would appreciate it if you liked this, if you'd hit like and hit subscribe and help me get there. If you aren't a patron, I'll leave the link down below for you to check it out, but make sure that you're checking the community tab so that you get a chance to ask questions when the next Q&A video comes up. Thanks guys, I love you, I'm thinking about you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys. Cause in trouble? Thank you for sticking around until the end of this video. I wanted to let you know, like I said at the beginning, we are having an iWalk 2.0 giveaway. I am super excited for this because I know that so many of you guys are recent amputees, are facing amputation, have ankle surgery, are dealing with ankle issues, and I wanted to be able to give away an iWalk. I wish there was more than one to give away. I'll have more coming up in the future, but thanks to the partnership of iWalk Free, the company that creates these products, we do have one to give away to one lucky winner on May 30th. All you have to do to be entered to win is hop down to the 
link. I'll put it in the description box and also in a pinned comment and enter your email address. That is it. I would ask that anyone who enters be someone who actually needs it or knows someone who needs it. If you're a perfectly able-bodied person who just thinks it's a cool toy, um, maybe skip out on this giveaway and save it for somebody whose life it could really improve like it has mine. Thank you guys so much. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and make sure you enter to win. May the odds ever be in your favor. Hunger Games, anybody? Thanks guys. Have heard from